All right, what's up mga ka-investa? Welcome to the show once again where we interview, deconstruct, and get inspiration from successful Filipino entrepreneurs. Now, in this episode, we have a very, very special guest. Si Sir Jose Magsaysay Jr. What's up, sir? Hello. Thank you for, no, for, for talking to me and no, uh, having this conversation with you. It's an honor to be here in your program. Thank you so much for accept, accepting the invite, sir. So, before we go into the business side of stuff, naman, sir, uh, kumusta ka naman, sir, this ECQ or this lockdown? What have you been spending most of your time with? Ngayon? Ah, with the family, the dogs, my bicycle, cleaning, huh? cleaning the house. All right. Yeah. So, okay, sir. So, Alam ko marami ka, sir, extreme hobbies, no? Have you been able to uh, utilize, utilize your time this lockdown and, ano, have fun pa rin? Oh, na, yeah, naman. At least, nakaka... I'm, I'm glad I have motorcycle. So, so yung scooter ko, na labas-labas ko. So, may extreme, may ex- extreme sport pa rin. Kasi, wheelie-wheelie ng scooter, ganun. So, <laughs> oh. Saan ka nagsascooter ng sir? Dito lang. Sa, sa neighborhood lang. Neighborhood lang, sir. Mm. Alright, sir. Sige. Sige, let's go back to the roots, sir. So, a lot of people might already be familiar with your story because you have one of the most amazing stories here in the Philippines <clears throat> when it sure. comes to starting a business, no? So, uh, sir, you came from very humble beginnings to owning one of the biggest and most popular brands in the Philippines. So can you, I know you've been uh, sharing your story a lot now, but to the audiences that don't know yet, how did you start from nothing to becoming part of a billion do- billion peso company, which is Potato Corner? Uh, nung, ano, nung, nung, dahil namatay yung tatay ko. Tingin, tingin ko, ito yung roots eh. Namatay yung tatay ko maaga. High school pa ako. Eh, siya yung breadwinner. Eh, wala nang, walang pera. Walang pera. So, buti na lang uncle ko. Uh, my uncle put me to school, no? Scholar ako ng uncle ko for college. But I didn't have any allowance. No, I, my mom couldn't afford allowance. In fact, my mom uh, rented out some of the rooms in the house. Kaya sa sala lang ako natutulog sa, sa floor. So, nung college ako, yun ang problema ko. No? Problema yung, problema na nga yung ano, walang allowance. Problema yung pag, pag-uwi, papasok. So, pag kinakapos ako, for example, kasi sa TAF ako nag-aaral, so, uwi ako ng ano, uh, Quezon City. May bus sa TAF sa puntang Cubao. Mula Cubao, dapat nag-jeep naman ako pa uwi. Yung problema, pag wala akong pamasahin na, ginagawa ko, huwag daw huwag niyo susundan ha, kasi mali ito eh. Sakay ako ng bus. Pero sakay ako sa, doon na ako sa Estribo. <laughs> kasi, pag malapit yung konduktor, baba na ako. Kasi wala akong pambayad eh. Sakay na naman ako ibang bus. Mm. Si Stribo lang na naman ako. Para malapit na yung konduktor, baba na naman. Sakay. Umabot ako ng mga apat o lima sakay ng bus para makarating ng Cubao. Eh. From Cubao, lakad na ako pa. Eh. Mga 30 minute walk to to the house mula sa bahay naman yun. So, yun no? So, tapos sabi ng isang kaibigan ko, Uy, Jomag, meron dito ano, si Wendy's naghahanap ng, traba- ng, ng, ng mga crew sa first Wendy's sa uh, Makati. Ako naman, wow, okay ito ah. Kasi, pausop pa lang. Hindi mo lang pausop, pero pa-start pa lang may mga part-time. So, perfect, sabi ko. Working student muna ako. So, apply ako sa Wendy's. Natanggap ako. Schedule ko gabi. So, uh, while I was studying, I was working at Wendy's sa gabi. Kaya lang, ang hirap. Kaya naintindihan ko gano'ng kahirap. Mga heroes rin yung mga working students. Eh. Ang hirap-hirap magtrabaho at saka mag-aral at the same time. Alam mo, dahil panggabi yung duty ko, sa umaga, tulog ako sa mga subject. Yung first two subjects, antok na antok ako nun. So, ang hirap. 
And then Wendy's, because you know, I tried to work naman hard really in Wendy's. Uh, cleaning toilets, washing dishes, you know, bossing the tables. Uh, I was offered to become a full-time employee while I was still in college. No? Alam mo, dahil kung wala akong pera nun, tapos gusto ko tudungan yung nanay ko. So I said yes. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, maybe college, I will finish college one of these days. Pero I will take this job first para lang I can provide for myself and for my mom. So I took the full-time job, stopped, dropped out from college muna. Okay, then, ulitin na. So 10 years ako, 10 years ako sa, ano, sa, sa Wendy's. Uh, from cleaning toilets all the way until I became, ano, eventually a district manager handling five stores. So Wendy's gave me an opportunity. And I stayed long naman in Wendy's and worked really hard there. Then even in Wendy's, eh, in Wendy's kasi, towards my end, towards my last few, last year in Wendy's, I started, you know, we st- I, um, started the family ready with our firstborn. Then nakita ko sa sarili ko, hindi ko yata ma- mapapaaral sa magandang skwela itong anak ko. So I started doing other sidelines, selling watches to my fellow employees. Wow. Then eventually, I was already selling refrigerators, appliances to my fellow employees. So I also understand, ang hirap pala mong elekta ng ano, nahulugan na ano, <laughs> mga utang, babantayan mo talaga pag sweldo. So, you know, no? so, trying to, trying to, ano, trying to add more income. Trying, trying to add more income. Then eventually, napunta naman sa ano, bili ako ng mga karton ng french fries sa isang Wendy's outlet. Pag marami na, bibenta ko na sa Bulacan na may tubo ng konti. So, my, my day entrepreneur started at Wendy's also at the same time. Kasi, nagbabaya and sell na ako doon, slowly. Uh, that helped, it helped naman my income. Then eventually, I was asked by partners to to join, if I can join a new concept, which is really potato corner na, flavored french fries. So, apat kami doon when we started. So, 150,000 yung kapital, big to 37,500 kami, eh wala akong pera noon. Utang ako sa kapatid ko, hindi ako pinautang. Buti na lang, bayaw ko, nagpautang. Tapos, simple lang. The, the idea lang, ano bang pwede ilagay sa... Friend? Kasi yung isang partner ko, meron siyang ano, flavored popcorn business. Before, potato corner pa. But it's very doing very well. So, some of the my partners said, ano bang pwede ilagay ang flavor? So, one said, oh, french fries, subukan natin. So, napunta sa, sa flavored french fries. And that's like history already, imagine. No? We didn't know naman it was going to be this successful. Ang goal lang naman namin is to make money so that we can buy a cell phone. Eh, no araw, mahal na cell phone. Is to buy maybe a car. So, achieve naman lahat yung vision na yun. <laughs> so, we're good. We're good naman. And then, and then, di ba, crisis ngayon. So, we've been jumping from one or growing from one crisis to another all these years. You know, after we started Potato Corner. So, my life, my life is all about, ano, my life, Potato Corner's life, is about one crisis after another. All right. All right. Wow. Amazing. So, sir, paano nyo, sino yung nag-start ng idea ng Potato Corner among your co-founders, sir? Well, Ricky, Ricky Monteliba, no? Started the pot- flavored popcorn business. Mm-hmm. And then, friend na si George Winicky. George Winicky was the one who said, maybe we'll put flavored in french fries. Yan. Uh, all right. So, why do you think they chose you to become part of the business, sir? Was there something they were looking in, um, a talent that you had that they wanted to bring you inside Potato Corner as a business partner, sir? Maybe it's because of my 10 years of, of operations. That was my talent, eh, operations. Mm-hmm. All right. So you so may... to be yung background ko is very strong in operations. So it's not like you know I can I'm not new to the food business to the fast food business. I've been cooking French fries for ten years already, and then I've been trained in the U.S. for operations. So Wendy's USA. Mm-hmm. So I have very strong background in operations, and because Wendy's is franchising, I knew something about franchising because Wendy's Philippines was a franchise from the U.S. All right. 
So back then, sir, di ba, it started no 1992. Did you, back then, naisip nyo na ba na one day potato corner will be this big? Naisip, naisip nyo na ba yun before na magiging ganito kalaki yung business nyo? Wala. Talagang ano lang. Gusto lang namin bumili ng cellphone at saka ng kotse. Yun, yun lang. Wala, wala pa kami yung vision nun. I mean, we were not businessmen. The only business background I had really was this buy and sell of mga appliances sa mga co-employees ko sa Wendy's. Okay. Alright. So, what's it like, sir, to start a business naman with your friends? Because, di ba, they, they are your friends and si, si Sir Ricky is your brother-in-law, sir. What's it like yeah. to have a business with people you're comfortable with? Well, that, 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 those are one of the crises we went through also. Eh. So for the first two years of Wendy's, we, 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 we felt some friction because all of four of us were running the company together. So we got a friction because although we had a vision to buy, for example, a cell phone, we all had different ways of achieving that vision. So we saw the conflicts in terms of ano, what we did, how did we fix that? that crisis, that, that, that issue on being friends and being business partners, we got a third party to come in. We said, we said to, our, to, our, no, to our auditor, he was an auditor of our company at the time, right? Donis, can you come in? Can you help us? We're, we're having some conflicts coming partners. Eh? Can you help us like run the company, teach us how to run the company as friends? And then, true enough, he was, true enough, he was able to help us. He drew the line He explained to us where the where friendship is and how business partners are. You have to draw the line. Uh, so he helped us. He helped, he helped us very well. So nawala yung yung issues ng conflicts between partners. But in the end of the day, if you look at it, no, in, if you look at it today, the the real lesson is when you have partners, there has to be one part partner only running the business. It cannot be one. Can cannot be two. Can lalo pang hindi three. Because Your, your partner should there's only there should be only one boss in the company or one man one partner or one person managing the company because if you have two then you have start conflicts of an already management issues it's like it's like ano it's like a like an animal a two headed a, a one headed animal is normal a two headed animal is what a monster so you know you have partners From the very start, you already, that's the lesson there from, from us, no? You have to agree first before you even start operating, who will be your managing partner? All right. Then everything, then you have to trust the partner. And then the others will remain in the board as a member of the board because, because you're partners or if you don't have a board yet, like an advisory committee. Then you agree first. And then the partner who's running the business will implement all that's been agreed by the partners. So you have to know which hat you're wearing. You have to be very, very strong on which hat are you wearing. Are you a manager? Are you a shareholder? Are you a member of the board? Or something like that. All right. So there's a way to fix. We didn't, we didn't want to break up our partnership that time when we had those issues. We said, let's get help. So part of our... Part of our habits, of, part of the habits of Potato Corner is always asking for help when we need help. We never fix anything ourselves because it's always better for us to look for people to help us. All right. But until now, sir, you're good, with, good friends with your founder, sir. Yes, we are. All right. That's good. Two, two of my... Ricky still with me. He's still my partner. Then we got also early on another partner, Jojo Montinola. And then, uh, yung sa original, kami dalawa na ni Ricky na titira. Mm. The other two have sold out. One in 2002. The other one, three years ago. All right. So, all right, sir. So, like you said, basically, Potato Corner has been going through a lot of crisis, no? Pero during the infancy stage naman of Potato Corner or no mga first few years nyo as a business, what were the biggest challenges that you had to face during that time? Yung, yung, yung first crisis was ano? 
we've opened our first outlet, di ba? Our first crisis, actually, was wala kami pera pang kapital. Mm. So, how did we solve that? We borrowed. Three of my partners borrowed. Well, I borrowed from Ricky. Kasi maraming pera si Ricky because of his popcorn, flavored popcorn business. Mm. Eh. So, okay na yun. Next crisis was, we didn't realize it was going to be a very successful ano, uh, business. Yung, pot- yung first store ng Potato Corner. One month payback lang yun eh. So, in, there was an opportunity now. People wanted to, ano, to, to, like, for example, di ba, our first store was in SM Mega Mall. We had friends in Makati who said, uy, dalhin mo yung Potato Corner dito. May friends kami sa Quezon City, dalhin mo naman dito yung, ano, yung Potato Corner. Oh. Eh, wala kami pera na pang expand. Di ba? Hindi, pa nga, hindi pa nga kami nakabayad ng utang. Eh. So, what did we do? Because of because of my my interest in, my my Wendy's background, I mean, maybe franchising is the way to go, and we did. Our second store was already a franchise. Maybe the first the first the first five seven stores or maybe ten stores after the first store was a franchise already, because we didn't have any money to grow. So, yon that see we were able to get through that crisis because. We franchised. Walang, anong crisis? Walang capital pang expansion? Anong solution? Franchise. Alright. So it's actually a, one of the best problems that you had, no? Kasi now, sobrang daming franchises ng Potato Corner. Yes. Uh, and it's good that we franchised. Uh, it's good we franchised because if we did not, we wouldn't have been the dominant player in the industry for this product category. Uh, kasi, you know, when we when we when we look back two years after two years later, no, in 1994, we looked back and daming kumopya ng flavored French fries. We counted more than 300 who were copying Potato Corner in flavored French fries product. If we didn't franchise, we wouldn't have developed enough number of outlets to block to block all the competitors. I mean, when I say block, means you have to become dominant. Dito sa industry, well, now, no, because of social media, because of internet, because of speed of everything. It's not the first mover who who ends up being the dominant. Eh. First one to become big, to scale up, is the one perceived as the first mover and becomes the dominant in the industry. All right. All right. So speaking of franchise, naman, sir, so I know a lot of people here are very interested in investing into a potato corner franchise. So a lot of material material can be found online if you search na how to franchise a potato corner. No, so we'll provide links in the description. Pero sir, you always like to say when when you know the rules, you can be cutting edge. In potato hor- corner, naman sir, what do you think makes the business cutting edge or what makes you different from yun nga yung 300 competitors nyo or yung mga biggest competitors nyo ngayon what makes you different from the big uh, franchises here in the Philippines ah I was talking about this eh, kasi my one of my new members of the board independent director Professor Ed Morato he mentioned this and this is actually who we are that's why we're still we're alive today and we we'll keep on growing in spite of one crisis after the other. Ang meron kami is AQ. Hindi IQ, hindi mo graduate, di ba? EQ, meron, malakas ang EQ ko. Kasi I was able to enter the Master of Entrepreneurship Program of AIM into, in 1999, in, in 2000. Ang requirement dun sa ang entrance test, ang entrance test sa AIM the time for the Master of Entrepreneurship Program was an EQ test, not an IQ test. And I passed. That means, well, I went through a lot already, no? My work in Wendy's, the death of my father, the the death of my mom, that time. So I went through a lot already of emotional, it was an emotional roller coaster for my life. So my EQ was good and I was able to enter the ME program of AIM. But what we have, what we have ever since we started, no? And that's why we're still good, is AQ. Not, not adversity quotient, no? Audacity quotient. That's how we are. And if you start, and if you look at the dictionary, what audacity means, it is exactly our secret to be where we are today. 
All right. Can you explain a little more about what AQ is to you? AQ? Yes. Sir. AQ is, ano, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the definition of AQ. AQ is, uh, let's see what AQ is. AQ is uh, boldness or daring, especially with confident or arrogant disregard for personal safety and conventional thought. And or other restrictions. So, ibig sabihin, bold. You're bold. You're daring. And uh, you will do everything for your company's sake so that you will survive. And you, and you won't be afraid. That is AQ, audacity being, having high audacity quotient. For example, people don't realize we opened Potato Corner USA during the Asia, during the world economic crisis, some a lot of people will not even do that. We we opened, we opened Potato Corner Indonesia. We didn't know anything about international franchising, but we did. Is that isn't that audacity being audacious or, or what? You know, so you just do what you think is right. Uh, ask help, but don't forget to ask help. Ask advice. But in the end, it's your decision. If you feel it's right, just do it. Just don't break rules and don't hurt anyone. That's what we don't never do. We don't hurt anyone. All right. Wonderfully said, sir. All right. So, so I have another question. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right? it's a common knowledge naman that on the first year, 80% of small businesses survive. On the second year, 70%. Fifth year, 50% na lang. And then, on the tenth year, roughly 30% na lang of the small businesses survive. So we have a very low probability of business survival. So with it, when it comes to the franchises naman, sir, do you have any kind of statistics uh, when it comes to how successful the franchises are for Potato Corner? Well, let's put it this way. I'm just, I'm talk not only about potato corner. I'll talk about franchising in general. Okay. Sir. If a company already franchise prices, franchises their business, it is assumed that their business model is already correct. It means it's profitable. The franchises can make money, and they've done all the mistakes already. It's because of those qualities that. Do you have a 90% survival rate or 90% success rate if you franchise rather than putting up your own business and starting from me? If you already see like a potato corner and you get a franchise, that means it's been a tried and tested already. So there's a big chance that you will succeed. The only time you won't succeed if you don't manage it day to day. Because there's some, some, some people think because it's a franchise, they don't have to do anything anymore. No, it's... Franchising is another form of entrepreneurship. You still have to run your stores daily, run it like it was your business, run it like it's the only thing that you have. You have to focus on day-to-day -day management and be hands-on. If you're not hands-on, then your business will die like, like all the rest. So a franchise is not an excuse for you not to be running your business hands-on. It is going to be just the same as putting up your own business but the advantage of a franchise is you already it already did all the it already fixed all the the problems before all right and aside from that sir no it's ang binabayaran talaga doon is yung brand kasi it's it's really hard to start a brand from scratch unlike potato corner na talagang tinatrust na ng mga pilipino no sir and worldwide na rin well, yun, may advantage yung potato corner as far as branding is concerned. Yeah, you're right. All right, sir. So right now, sir, last year, you stepped down uh, as the CEO now of Potato Corner. But right now, you are the chairman emeritus of Potato Corner. Yep. So how do you see Potato Corner in 5 to 10 years? Well, Potato Corner is... A lot of people, when, when they talk about the Potato Corner, 
potato corner. They think it's a potato corner cart only, no? But the potato corner group, the company that runs potato corners, other brands also. So potato corner is going is is a is a is a multi brand company. It's not only running potato corner but other brands as well. And then potato corner ten years from now will be bigger than what it is today. Uh, it will be of course stronger worldwide. More than more than the two hundred plus outlets it has today. Ten years from now, maybe a thousand, two thousand more stores outside the outside the Philippines for Potato Corner. So very positive with the outlook of Potato Corner. All right. So right now, sir, Potato Corner really is huge, and it's valued at a billion peso, na, di ba? So are you looking in? It will Potato Corner. Uh, list the shares in the exchange anytime soon, Kaiser IPO. No, we have no plans right now yet. No plan. it Depends. I'm not. I'm not closing the door on that. But right now, the in the short term, there's no there are no plans for that. Okay. All right. All right. So part of this interview, then, sir, we're we're gonna try to deconstruct and get to know you more by understanding what made you successful. So when I look into the research about you sir you emphasize a lot about focus so how do you know which to focus on given na sobrang daming options ngayon with technology so ang daming pwedeng pasukan na business so yung yeah. problem natin ngayon is uh, parang ang daming choices so what made you decide to focus on potato corner and how can we also apply that in our lives, sir? Well, to me, focus is just paying attention to something that you're doing well. Uh, I, my, I, I compare that to driving. Pag nag-drive ka, Renzo, Yes, sir. Wala kang gagawing iba kundi drive lang, no? Your, your attention is 100%. Your IQ is 100% on the road. Whatever IQ you have, no? Stop. 100% ng IQ, kung anong aman IQ ka, and then, so the drive. So it means full attention because of driving. You can anticipate what's going to happen. You know what's going to where you're going. You notice a boy walking on the sidewalk. Yeah. You know the, you're you're aware of the streets that you're going to turn to. You know. Now, why don't you pick up your phone and start texting? You know, you remember what happens. You don't remember what street you went to. You're not, you just go by what your mind naturally tells you, like muscle memory or something, brain memory. You don't notice a person walking, a little boy walking on the side of the street. Because you're already, your IQ is divided into two already. So now 50% of your IQ is now on driving. 50% of your IQ is now on the phone, texting. So multitasking is good. People keep on saying, you have to multitask nowadays. Yeah, of course. But believe you me, in our experience, if you focus on one thing, that will make you successful. If you master one thing, you will be successful. Jack of all trades is good, but you get paid and you get dividends and you get profits if you put 100% attention in what you're doing. Like, for example, look at your a messy table. Uh, in a messy table, you can see so many things, a lot. So, so many opportunities and so many things to do. But if you say there, there's a glass in that, in that messy table, you get that glass, look at it, there's so many things you can do with that glass. So that's what I call focus. You put a microscope in something that you want to do and want to, make, want to be successful in, and then you'll find it easier to be successful because you're focused on one thing. So it's so dangerous. I had no choice, okay? Hindi ako college graduate. Wala ako mapupunta ibang trabaho. No choice ako eh. Kaya yung mga may lifeline ka, delikado may lifeline ka, may options ka. Pag wala kang option, wala kang option sa buhay, wala kang lifeline sa buhay, wala kang nanay, tatay, nabibigyan ka ng pera pag nag- naghirap ka, gagawin mo lahat para mabuhay ka. Put yourself in that position to focus because if, if you don't focus, nothing will happen to you. Parang it, Pag nawala pa itong ginagawa mo to, mamamatay ka na. Parang ganun na focus ang 
ang kailangan ng isang tao para mag-succeed siya. Kasi pagkakaroon ka ng mastery eh. Pagkakaroon ka ng mastery. For, for example, we mastered franchising. We mastered uh, our op- kind of operations. We mastered reading the environment. Self-mastery pa. I mean, people don't realize. I've been, I've, I've, I had, I've had five years of, ano, psycho, psychotherapy. That's for my self-mastery also. Part of my training in, in Master of Entrepreneurship is self-mastery also. And creative and intuitive thinking. So imagine, I, I keep on investing. A lot of, dra- drop out ako. But I keep on studying. Buti na lang yung Master of Entrepreneurship that time sa AAM, hindi kailangan ng college degree, kaya ako nakapasok doon. So, graduate naman ako ngayon ng Master's degree. But even though I have my Master's degree in Entrepreneurship, what do I do? My habit is still learning and learning up to now. And I observe and keep on observing. And I test. So, yun mga habits eh. Keep on testing, keep on experimenting. Uh, look at look at what AQ is, audacity quotient. That's what you need to be different. Kasi, pag wala kang audacity quotient, you can never be in the forefront. Eh. A potato corner is always in the forefront of everything. We're, we're a trailblazer. Eh. We, we, we create our own best practices. We, we actually read you what you do, for example. We read what you do, but we, we, we tend to do it different from everybody. Because we're, we, have, we, we do it, we're audacious, no? we, we want to be in the forefront. If you want leadership, you have to have I, AQ and practice it also. All right. <clears throat> Ganda, sir. All right. Parang, parang yatang boring. Parang nangangaral yata, par. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman, sir. Ano lang, napa-internalize lang ako, nagre-reflect ako kasi ganda ng sinabi niyo, sir. <laughs> Ngayon, sir, ano ba yung fino-focus nyo, sir? Kung hindi ka na CEO nung Potato Corner? I am back running Potato Corner. Ah, okay, sir. All right. So, I retired last year, but the board the board of Potato Corner asked me to run uh-huh. Potato Corner again during crisis. Remember, ah, crisis proven na tayo. Crisis proven na yung Potato Corner. Who do you want to run your company during a crisis? Somebody who's been through several crises already. Diba? That's why I'm back running the company again. Because we have already gone through several crises. Mm-hmm. Asian economic crisis, world economic crisis, potato corner, tapos COVID crisis pa ngayon. Alright. So, ilang years pa yung tinatarget nyo, sir? Na? To be come part of potato corner. When ah, no, I, 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 I told my partners, eh, potato corner has never been work for me. I enjoy running potato corner. It's never been work for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'll run it, and I'll, I'll run it, I'll run it. Uh, maybe, maybe after this crisis, I'll, I'll let go, and and continue the prof- professionalization of the company. I'm here to help Potato Corner Company. All right, all right. Sige, sir. So a little more about learning, naman, sir. Do you have any favorite books or life-changing books that you've read? Books. Yes, sir. Sir, okay, yun ang problema ko. Hindi ako, makaba- <laughs> hindi ako makatapos ang libro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Talaga, sir. I start books, but I cannot seem to finish them. Mm-hmm. I like, ano, I like, I like listening to YouTube. Uh, I like listening to TED Talks. I like listening to short clips. And uh, maybe uh, summaries of books. I like reading. Uh, but I, but I don't mind studying in a in a formal like AIM like Ateneo like Harvard so that I don't mind investing to me those things are investments but reading books is really not my thing so all right sir sa mentors naman sir who do you consider one of your biggest mentors in life in in business i have many i have many mentors i I told you a while ago, diba, that my father died when I was young. So my life has always been looking for mentors, for for men who could, who will be examples to me, who I can follow. Like I I pick up bits and pieces from all all my all my idols, all my mentors. Eh. So many I plenty men, mentors, and I owe I owe them all a lot. 
for it. So, another thing naman about failures, no, sir, is I ab- about learning is we learn a lot by failures. So, during your entire um, run with Potato Corner, what do you consider the biggest failure you've had naman? I can't say. Marami, marami failure. Madami, plenty, plenty. Nothing na you're, biggest and one. You're right. Well, not enough to bring the company down. Okay. Yeah. You measure your ano, you measure your how you how you test yourself, how you go what you go into, what you do. Uh just make sure you don't make a decision that will jeopardize the entire car company. Or make a decision that will jeopardize the company's uh, life. Okay. So, isa pa, sir. If you were a college professor, what do you think you would teach them? I am a professor now. Ah, really, sir? At what, Ateneo, what have you been? At, in Ateneo, in, in, ano, I'm faculty in Ateneo and Asian Center for Entrepreneurship in the graduate school, at my graduate school. All right. And then, I am entrepreneur in residence at Asian Institute of Management also. So, what will I teach? Uh, the depending. Ano sa, uh, what, what do you mean? What, what subject or what? Kumbaga, sir, if you had anything, if you had the choice that you wanted to teach uh, young professionals, what would you, what topic would you choose? What subject would you teach them specifically? Since marami ka experience with the business world, sir, is it entrepreneurship in general? Would it be um, operations? Would it be marketing? Ah, it would be ano, AQ. AQ talaga, sir. Uh, audacity quotient. Maybe that's, that. I think there's no subject like that yet. Probably in the world, no? Maybe that's worth teaching. Mm, all right. All right, sige. So right now, sir, you consider, of course, you're one of the most successful Filipinos here right now. And what have you been spending most of your wealth on? What do you do for fun, sir? My wealth or my family? So, family. So, uh, I'm enjoying this, you know, these lockdowns because I'm with family. You know, we're, we're together. Although I have one son in Japan, no? in Osaka now. Mm-hmm. Like lockdown siya. But I'm just enjoying being at home. Uh, I don't spend. Uh, I just I just love being at home. Uh, ex- I'm, an, I, I'm an extreme introvert. Although marami nagsasabi sa akin na kaibigan, hindi alata. But I am an extreme introvert. Uh, that's why you can lock me in, in the house or in my room and I'll be fine just lock in my room for a month or two. Alright. <laughs> Actually, hindi ko rin inakala na introvert ka, sir. <laughs> Alright. Hindi. So, alam mo, ano eh, I, I hardly talk. I've been invited to, to, to talk, to commencement speaking, to talk about, to talk in front of many people. I I keep on saying sorry. And I keep on saying maybe next time the only reason I do that because I'm an introvert. I'm not comfortable talking in public. I can hold my own. No, I can talk, naman. But to me, it's so it 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 it, 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 it tires me, and I'm afraid of talking. I'd rather be talking to you one on one, talking to a small group, just talking randomly or Q and A, then talking to a large group and sharing. I wish I can share, no, but I'm not comfortable. Hmm. All right, all right. So, of course, we have to be respectful with your time, Renzer. So, I'm gonna be having the last question here, na. So, given us here, na right now we are in a huge global crisis. We are in a health pandemic, sir. If you had a message to the world, what would it be? I think I think my message will be this will all pass. 
this is a crisis and the uh, crisis will always pass. You have to adapt, but if you don't adapt, you will become irrelevant. So how do you adapt? That's the biggest question. Find a way to adapt, but don't adapt too far from your core. Just be close to your core when you adapt. Or when they say, when people say, say, you pivot. It's okay to pivot. Just make sure you pivot close to your DNA or to what your core is. All right. Very well said. Salamat, sir. Maraming salamat. Okay. O, ingat, ah. Thank you, sir, for being part of this show. Salamat talaga, sir. Ingat All right. Ka, sir.